of Uganda, Honorable Ministers, the clergy, the bishop and the clergy, Honorable Members of Parliament, Generals and Officers of UPDF, Janet and the children and the larger family of Keith Mahakanzi, fellow mourners. The disadvantage of speaking at the end, apart from being almost repetitive, also people are tired. So you have to be very brief, otherwise people will switch off and do not listen to what you are saying. But I will try and say what I think I must say about Keith. and do so very briefly. As Charles said, Keith and I have the same background in terms of uh, our families belonging to that group of Christians who are commonly called revivalists Avarokori. So we have same background. So I knew Keith when he was still young. I also knew him when we were working together in the government and we became friends. So I will try and speak along those lines so that I don't repeat what others have said, but I use my own experience and knowledge to exemplify about the life and character of Keith. Growing up, of course, you have already heard he grew up very well, was well brought up. He studied well, he went to the best schools, best university, and got a job. And as you heard in his character, the, his behavior and character came actually from his background of revival. That's why he was honest, like people have been saying. He was transparent, and so on and so forth. He was a human being, completely. We can't say that he didn't have any fault, no. He was human. No man is infallible, of course. But on the average, he was above average. And he had good qualities that are not rare, uh, that are not common, that are rare. And these are the ones we are talking about. So, but that happens when you are very good or when the other people are very bad. So you must be careful when we say that the people of his character are few, then it means most of us are very bad. But I think Keith lived a full life, very transparent, very honest, he hated bad things, he hated conflict, 
He hated intrigue. He hated lies, dishonesty, and so on. So we thank him because of those attributes. He did not work for the downfall of other people in order for him to look good. Because some people, instead of making themselves clean, they smear others with mud so that they look better. Keith did not do that. In fact, he was a victim of it. I remember one time, because of his job, which Mr. Kahosa was talking about, and uh, Mr. Gobi, the ST, talked about the, that job of ST is a very, very sensitive office. And because of that, he attracted many enemies. I remember one case very well when he was accused of stealing money from the treasury. Can you imagine? And not alone. In fact, I was part of the of the racket and others like Bob Kawanero and Ben Kavuya. And this was a machination, by the way, by people who were holding very important offices. They created it. They framed, tried to frame him up using computers, joining voices, creating false documents in order to, to bring him down. And there were others, of course, who were supposed to have been in the, in, in the racket. But imagine if we do not have leaders who are clear-headed, who investigated, they decided to investigate and found that these were lies. But if the leadership was not clear, especially His Excellency, the President, Keith could have gone in prison and others, I, and myself, for things we did not, that did not take place. But when they investigated, Bank of Uganda came out and said, absolutely rubbish, there is nothing. But for us who were involved, we knew that there were people who were scheming, who had some rogues like Simon Peter Odong, whom they used to create stupid things and patch them up together and take them to this head of state that people are stealing Keith Mahakan is doing this and that. So he had a lot of work, but he had a lot of people who were working against him. But he was upright, he was doing the right things. When they investigated, of course, they found everything was rubbish. Just like uh, this mad person who is on, on social media accusing him of taking his land. How can you say he took my land when you have never gone to court if it was your land? You go to social media when you don't go to open a case in the court. So, Keith lived an upright life. He worked diligently 
and patriotically, of course, and we thank him for that. Keith was a friend of ours, of mine and my wife. He always came home just like we always came here to his home. I worked with him closely for many years because the, this office of ST, when you are dealing with security, you need the, this office. So for many years, especially when I was DG of internal security organization for 10 years, and the economy was not this big, we worked together. And he helped me a great deal because he advised us. When you, when, if he can't give you money, he can tell you how you can go about it without spending a lot of money. So I thank him for that. We have been very close even uh, before he went to Milan. I talked to him on phone, but later on, after he had gone, Susan kept in touch with him and Janet. And in fact, the last call uh, Susan made, Keith told him, told her that, sorry, doctor, uh, doctors have entered the room and they never talked again. That was the last time. So to J Janet, we thank you very, very much for standing by your husband up to the last hour. Thank you very much. The children, as someone said, Keith has left a big name for you to use. You can build on it. If people don't understand you, say I'm um, Keith Mahakanzi's son or daughter. People will know who you are because of the big name he has left there. He have said that people will go away after a few days, uh, Professor Bazeo, and I think it was confirmed by another hey, hey, Ruse Nachove. So that's a challenge to us. They are telling us that don't come here and then run away. Let us try and keep around you. And we shall do our best to do that. Now, uh, my brother, Reverend Biarugawa, we had, we had you, your advice about discipline, about what Uganda hasn't done, and uh, my elder brother, Mr. Kahosa, we have heard you, your proposals, how you, what Uganda should do, I mean the government should do to make Uganda better. But as someone who has been around for a long time, we have achieved very, very important things for Uganda, upon which everything else will be achieved. One is security. Security. Uganda is an island of security and freedom, especially freedom. Because when you hear the church freely talking 
about the government and the former ST freely telling the Prime Minister this, this is freedom. All given by government. All, I'm not comparing Uganda to other countries, but what I'm saying is that we may not have this at the moment, but we might be having something better and more critical. So, but we have had you and we should work on it. And it's not a government alone. It is with you, with us all. Because when you talk about bribes, who is giving the bribes? Who is? Is it not ourselves who bribe the public officials? Because it takes two to tango. Yes, recently someone came. This is a living example from one district, actually from Zimbabwe, and said there is a state attorney, he's taking bribes, he took so much money. Now there is someone in prison, he's, she, he's, she's asking for seven million. I asked him, can you work with us and we give you the money and you take it to her? This time around, because whenever we ask such a question, they say no. They are reporting, but they don't want to be, you know. But this time around, this man said yes. And we... We gave them, I sent a police officer. He worked with the, the State House and Corruption Unit. They took the money to this state attorney. She received it. They arrested her and found the whole drawer full of money, which she had received that day, millions. So what am I saying? I'm saying, that some of these things we need to work on them together. No, it's not only the government. If we are going to fight corruption, we must, we must fight it all round. Because as you know, even in our small farms and so on, you have problems with workers. They are stealing. So the church, you have a lot of work to do, you know. So, uh, I'm not saying that we are perfect, no. The biggest room in the world is the room for improvement. I know that. So, and we shall try to do that. So lastly, I would like to thank Right Honorable Prime Minister to thank the government, thank his Excellency the President, for the care he has for his lieutenants. Mr. Kaoza is saying that it should be done for everybody, but there is always a beginning. Keith has served, you know, with the distinction from the testimonies given since he, his passing, all seven weeks or more, everybody is talking about his attributes, his, you know, zealousness and his work and so on. So it was only fair to give him a befitting send-off. So we thank His Excellency the President, through you, Right Honorable Prime Minister, Never mind Mze Kahoza, as the economy grows, continues to grow. Like you said, it's growing slowly, but as it grows, we shall extend, I'm sure government will extend uh, this kind of uh, service to other places, including the people at the ON Force Dam. May the soul,
sorrow of Keith rest in eternal peace. May I now take this uh, singular honor to invite you, Right Honorable Prime Minister, to address the mourners.